guys, welcome to Pixie Nettery and I am Pixie. Hope you are doing okay. It is time for a new custom doll video. This time I bring to you another commissioned order from my customer. And it will be a doll inspired by a mobile game. This video is not sponsored, so I will not mention the name of this game. Just in case to avoid any troubles with monetization. I'm still relatively new to YouTube, so I don't want to trigger my luck at the moment. And if you are a developer of any game, book writer, comic artist or just want to promote your product, I can make this for you, you know, in a doll format. At this point I believe I can create any character into a doll even if it is an artificial object or just a logo. Also I'm always open for a commission orders if you feel like you are in the mood to get yourself a one of a kind custom doll. And we are starting. This character's name is Nikki, the main character of the game. This game is about changing your character's style and playing stories. I played this game for some time myself. I know that it is almost all about changing your outfits, so I liked it a lot. You can find there quite a variety of clothes inspiration. My customer wanted me to create a very specific doll for her. In this outfit. It is the anniversary dress of this character and when I saw it, oh boy, I was excited. Of course I agreed to try to make it. And the result is just mm-hmm. Watch this video till the end to see it. And while I'll be putting all pieces of her dress together, let me tell you more about the idea and material choices behind it. You see, this dress isn't that simple. It has a very magical iridescent touch to it. You can't say from the very start, is it pink, is it blue, teal or violet? What the hell color of this dress is? But we are professional, remember, right? We need to pick one of the colors. Or some more. And actually, I picked white because white can reflect any color and become the one it reflects. Just some color theory. If you don't know, if you blend all spectra of lights of the rainbow colors, you will get white. So I decided to stop with it. Also, I will add blue, pink and violet mid-tones to a variety of colors. But those will be not that obvious. I will put them inside the doll's many layers that I will make for her dress. I want to create an illusion that this dress isn't completely white, isn't blue or violet. I want to make its colors shift a bit, depending on what environment, light and circumstances will surround this doll. So I picked shiny fabrics with some texture to achieve the look that will perform the best for this character. Starting from the top, I already decided in what order I will put the layers of fabrics that I picked. I put the densest and bold color which is blue as a base for the top. The semi-transparent iridescent fabric was the second one I put there. And on the top I slapped textured white fabric, which is semi-transparent as well. So you actually can see all colors that lay below. And surprise surprise, I changed everything to white at the very last moment. I thought that blue was still too bold for my liking. So I decided to redo the whole top completely. And it was the right decision. For a base I took plain white cotton instead of blue. And repeat all sewing steps one more time. Also I decided to change my stitching a bit to make the seams slimmer. Because I didn't like the previous top fitting on the doll at all. For me it is crucial to make the doll's outfit believable. Now you see the comparison of the two tops and for me it is obvious which is better one. Do you see it? I don't want it to be too bulky in places where it can be avoided. That's why even if I am satisfied with the shape I always prefer to iron details with iron to make them even flatter. And we are going to the skirts. There should be a lot of everything going on. So I wasn't holding myself too much and took pretty big chunks of fabric to create all the skirt volume for the dress. First of all, I assemble all pieces of the skirts, layer by layer, iron some seams. Because the further work will go, the harder such a simple process will get. This white textured fabric will go on the top skirt. I also used it as the final layer of the top. So when all layers are prepared, it is ready to be gathered into a skirt. I used pins to secure every layer on its place. Sliding is the least that we need. Overall, there will be only 4 layers of the skirt and that should be just enough to create the necessary volume. The only thing left is to create folds and sew skirts in the waistline. And a little magic trick for a lazy seamstress. How to tie a knot with one hand. Make a loop, thread through it and tie a bit harder and that's it. You are ready to continue and you had to let go of your grip on the skirt. Waist secured and I cut the back of the dress so doll's hips will go through it. Hem this opening. Trim excess fabric on the top and skirt is pretty much finished. I 
I press it with iron a bit and the skirt is ready for the next step. Attach the top. With such voluminous dresses, this part can be tricky. I had many struggles in past, but this time fabrics are airy and thinner than usual, so it wasn't that much of a trouble. I iron the waistline with a good amount of pressure to make everything flat. Now it is much better. The skirt still had a few imperfections in the layering, so I corrected the unevenness with scissors. If you are having the same issue with your dress, then please do it slowly and trim less than your need, just in case. You always can trim more, but it is much harder to rewind the process. With the lighter, I seal the edges of the skirts. Time to decorate our dress's base. With a ribbon, I rub the waist. On the back I will put ring ties. Tie a bow and it is done. Dress is firmly sitting on the doll's body. Out of camera I made a bow for a back. I took white ribbons with iridescent pattern on them. Also I added few color accents with organza and thin atlas ribbons. With a few solid stitches, I put the bow in its place. With the tiny silver accessories, I finalized this step. All metal furniture on my dolls I try to glaze with gloss varnish so it will save its clear silver color as time pass by. On the bottom edge of the first layer of the dress I put soft white laces. It will unite the whole look and will make it tidier. So you see that this simple line definitely makes things better. And we came to another interesting part. I want to create drops of textures on this dress. Nikki has some shines on her dress and I was thinking how I can repeat this in real life. So with a transparent fabric 3D paint I will make it possible. I want to densely dot the dress with these small droplets. I believe that when the light will fall onto them it will create a very interesting look. When it is done it is time to make pair of shoes for this doll. I made pair of epoxy sculpt tips for these shoes. I will use them as a base. Also, I'm making a few cardboard soles and gluing epoxy nose tips to them. Add another pair of soles. The tips I rub with a piece of white cotton. Then I secure the fabric in the place with threads. And we're getting cute flip-flop. At this step it is very nice timing to put some decorations onto those shoe bases. And put ties. I make another pair of soles out of PU fabric to cover all imperfections. put another shiny thing. I made heels out of warbler.
and cover everything with UV resin. A resin will make heels harder and last longer. When the resin dried out, I paint everything white and the shoes are done. Some minor elements of this outfit are left, such as choker, so I will just make it. And we are going to a final part of this video. Unfortunately, I can't show the full process of making her hair. Also, starting from this moment, all my videos most for sure will be shorter. As you already know, I am from Ukraine and we are having blackouts on all territory every now and then. So due to the war and challenge from the Russia side, I have to adjust my schedule. And I need to save my power banks. So don't be too harsh on me and just enjoy what we are got here. So you see that I applied some of the drops on the doll's body and made her a pair of gloves. Also, the very last moment I decided to add a weightless iridescent bow on her chest. Nikki is having some kind of a ribbon situation going there, so I tried to translate it to my doll. And now we are going to her face. I had so much fun making this doll. Her hair, oh how I'd wish to film this part for you guys this time, but it wasn't possible. I had no electricity, I tried to save my power banks and there was no assurance that electricity will come back anytime soon. So I thought that I for sure may need those later. It was no chance I will film that part. And the light from the window were the only one I had that day. Work still had to be done in time. And frankly saying, I was quite stressed. So I let myself chill on this part. The next day I was able to film her face. And I'm happy that I managed to paint it just in a few hours. It went very smoothly, so I hadn't to redo any part of it, which is great. I really enjoyed every part of the process of creating this doll. And I want to thank my customer for making this order. I love what I made. I hope that you will like your new part of the collection when you will get her into your home. Thank you. And that is pretty much it about this doll. She's a mesmerizing beauty. I like the effects on her dress, I like every part of her and I'd wish to get more orders like this one. And I hope you guys are having a great time watching this video. It took me great effort to deliver this to you, so be kind and leave comments and feedback down below. I love reading your comments. And I'd highly appreciate your attention to my art. Your activity helps my channel to grow, so it makes my days brighter. Knowing that there are people who share the same passion for art as I do. It is the end of this video, and since I have nothing more to say, I wish you guys to have a magical and calm day. See you in my next videos. Bye!